This video will expand more on what we can do and think about for solutions to linear systems of equations from the linear algebra perspective. So if we have a linear system, the idea is that we can develop or find n linearly independent solutions to that system, or at least one that are linearly independent at a given point. And then if we have that, our general solution looks like vector x being our solution is some constant times vector x1 of t plus some constant times vector x2 of t all the way up to some constant times vector x n of t. But now this is sort of written in a way that looks like vector multiplication. So if I build a new matrix, a matrix capital X of t that has columns being these independent solutions that we found previously, then our general solution is really just this matrix capital X times a vector of constant c because in each component it's exactly what this does. The solution is then vector x, little vector x is capital X matrix times this vector c of unknown constants where c is the vector c1 up through cn because that's how multiplication works. Now this matrix here, x of t, is called the fundamental matrix for the system of differential equations. And we sort of phrase it this way because it gives us the setup for a general solution. Now how do I know that? Well, let's try to use this here to meet initial conditions. So if I have x of t, my solution being capital X, this fundamental matrix, times a vector of c's, I want to see, can I pick the value of the constant c so that this meets a given initial condition? Let's say I want to use the vector b as x at t0 for my initial condition. Well, this means I want to find c so that this vector b equals capital X at t0 times c. This is solving a linear system of equations. And we can always do this, provided this matrix was set up correctly. Remember, we assumed that the vectors x1 at t0 up to xn at t0 were linearly independent. Since this matrix here, x of t0, has these as columns, which means the columns of this matrix are linearly independent. From our theory, we then know that the rank of this matrix is n, and so it is invertible. This means c can always be found as the inverse of this matrix times the vector b. For any b, I have an invertible matrix, so I can always solve the system, and I can do so by multiplying by the inverse to get to this point. So we can meet any initial condition. Now in some contexts, you would do a little bit better than this if you want to be a little more tricky with your initial solutions. So if I can find solutions x1 through xn such that the value at this t0 is the standard basis vector ei, which means it has a 1 in the ith position and a 0 everywhere else, i.e. e1 is just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, e2 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, then this matrix x at t0 is just the identity matrix because on that point I have a 1 in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Which means the inverse is also the identity matrix. So it becomes in this case really really easy to find the constant c's. They are just the initial condition flat out. Whatever value you have the initial condition those are the values of the c's you need to meet that initial condition. So that's the idea of this fundamental matrix and what it is for a problem. It's really just taking the solutions you find via whatever method you do, and we'll do this for other types of problems later on, and putting them into a matrix, stacking them into a matrix, so then you have a single object that sort of contains all of your solutions, and then you can do matrix multiplication to get to set of that you want to meet for a given initial value problem.